Welcome to Faith in the Law. I'm Tim Rowe. I'm a Christian. I'm an attorney also. And yes, the two can mix. And this show's for you. Are you a Christian and you've had problems with the legal system and don't know where to turn? Are you a Christian and a legal problem may be burdening you down and you need some help? Well, I think we can help you on this show today. And that's what we're here for. We're here every Wednesday at noon on Channel 40, Faith in the Law. And I think you'll be blessed with our show today. We're here to help you. And this is your show every Wednesday. We're here at noon. So tune in, and I think you'll be blessed with our show. I want to introduce you to my lovely co-host who always tries to outbling me a little on her clothes, but she's never been <laughs> successful yet, and that is Jill Savage. Hi, Tim. Nice jacket. Thank you. Cool. Nice shirt. I know. Where'd you get um, that? The 70s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, where did you get that at your... Uh, no, I won't say that. <laughs> but I love Jill. We've been friends for many years, and uh, she's my co-host on this show, and she'll keep me out of trouble, but... Hey, let's go to some hot legal news. This is always a segment. We talk a little bit about Christians in the news. And uh, there's some interesting stuff going on in our country and with our sister city of St. Louis, kind of close. Well, you know, St. Louis agreed to pay $80,000 in attorney's fees and costs from a lawsuit filed by a Christian who was denied distributing literature at a gay pride event. Uh, what, what, what? It, I guess it happened in 2006. So it was a St. Louis-based ministry called Apple of His Eye Ministries. They were threatened by the park ranger. I don't know exactly why there would be a park ranger in St. Louis. But handing out literature and talking about Christian beliefs during a two-day gay pride festival. Uh, the ministry <laughs> filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court. And they said um, that it, it settled out of, out of court, but they said that that violated their First Amendment rights. Interesting. Wow. Because you see the opposite. I mean, you Thank see you. if Christians yeah. are going on at people sometimes. I mean, that, and everyone has the right. You may not agree with what people are doing. You may not agree with the cause. But in this country, you do have the right to protest. Uh, and they, the city agreed to pay $80,000. So all you people in St. Louis, your taxes are going up. But... Uh, <laughs> But they, they did, and thank God again for the Alliance Defense Fund, great Christian group that steps to the forefront. They train lawyers. In fact, I think I'm going to get involved with this group and go through their training. And then you have to okay. give 450 hours of pro bono work for constitutional issues. I um, don't know where you're going to find it, but good for you. Well, I graduated number one in con law in my class, and I've always loved con issues. And uh, I would love to argue in court. Bring the atheists and agnostics on. I'll argue. <laughs> argue pretty good, True. too. Um, interesting, too, with colleges. I mean, when I was in college, I had a Christian group, and, and Texas A&M University did not allow one Christian group to be uh, a club at the school. And do you know why they said that? No. They said that you have to allow people to join the group that aren't Christian. So Alliance, again, the Alliance Defense Club, and if you want to hear more about the Alliance Defense Fund, excuse me, it's the fund, but they are a group of attorneys that come forward and, and represent people. We do have a link on our website. Uh, they wrote a letter and said that, no, the law says that they're able to do this. I mean, all groups have some type of requirement uh, for, for membership. That would be like a Spanish-speaking club. I mean, I took four years of Spanish. I can't I can say hola, but that's about it. See. Si. Uh, so Christian groups, they said, yeah, you can say, because this was part of it, it said to all freshmen who declare themselves as Christians, are following Christ in their Christian walks, and whose desire is to serve others as a way of following Christ's example of leadership. That was a requirement to be part of the group. And Texas A&M did admit they were wrong, and with a letter from the National Defense, uh, Alliance Defense Fund, um, they agreed to let this Christian group go, which I think mm. is cool. Um, another interesting case, this sounds like me, because I always like to stir things up in high school a little bit, um, go figure, but uh, a student in Pennsylvania actually wore a t-shirt that said abortion is not health care. 
Ooh. And first his teacher said, you know, you better take that shirt off. Because I don't think that, that that may offend somebody. You know, I think in our schools, we're too worried about offending someone. It's about time that Christians stood up. Let's stand up for our rights. And, and this kid did. God bless him for doing that. He was sent to the principal's office. And they were able to get a temporary consent order from the federal court allowing him to wear that. In wow. But, I mean, wow. we were talking. What about Ed Hardy shirts? What about the skull, which is a symbol of death? And I actually threw all my Ed Hardy shirts away. I, I've never understood the uh, intrigue with the Ed Hardy. Well, I mean, it's more nothing of a disrespectful. Um, in, in the skull, the, the, I mean, that's like deadheads and Grateful Dead even. It's well, such a, a fine shirts. line. But, I mean, yeah, they, ha they have this loving, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what the Ed Hardy thing's all about. But Still looking into that. But they have affliction shirts and everything else. Why can't Christians express their belief? But exactly. It was great that they did and they were able to do that. So those are some of the hot legal issues in the news. And uh, now we're going to one of our favorite segments, our top five list. And Jill and I are both Facebook members, so we had top five reasons to add God as your friend yeah. on Facebook. Do, do, do people know that you can have God as a friend? You can. And, and yeah, you can be a fan of God and you can easily be accepted by God. And here's the top, God has top a five reasons page. why you need God as a friend on Facebook. Number five, God knows the answers to all of those goofy quizzes. <laughs> yeah, there's hundreds of them. You know, God knows everything. He's a pretty good person to have as a friend. Exclusive invitations to great events like the rapture and the awards banquet in heaven. I mean, what other greater person? God can throw a heck of a party. I mean, I, he gets invited to all those great events when God's your friend. God never sleeps, so he's always coming up with great plans and things for your life. Yep, God uh, wants you to be successful. God wants you to be prosperous. He's got great plans. And number two. God is a great advisor to keep you from falling into the wrong crowd. You know some of those friends we wish we didn't have. So God says, you know, you need to delete friend number one, two, and <laughs> Jill and I have a few of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exes. And number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it's rather prestigious to have the creator of the heavens and earth as a personal friend. Here, here. You know, God's not up there in some uh, big mansion not wanting to have anything to do with your life. God's concerned about even your legal problems and having God as your friend on Facebook is cool. Um, so we're uh, uh, always happy to bring you that segment. Uh, it's a great time on the show. Uh, if you do want to contact us, we do have a website, faithinthelaw.com. Uh, you can get on that website. We've got a lot of great things on the site. You can call me at my office. I'm right downtown Indianapolis. Uh, 632-2524. Uh, you can call us on that, faithinthelaw.com, uh, rowanhamilton.com. Uh, you can contact us concerning uh, this show, and we will. I'll do the best I can to answer the question as quickly as I can. But again, this show's for you. It's to help you. Uh, again, there's my uh, name and the number, uh, 632-2524. I've been down there 25 years. That means I'm about 36 years old. <laughs> I use a lot of <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, contact us. Uh, again, I'm not going to charge you. I'm concerned, and this is not only for Christians. If you're not a Christian and you need some help, contact me. This, again, is for the people of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana. Um, and briefly, too, about my um, book. I'm coming up with a book that's going to be out in December called The Magnificent Goodness of God and How It Will Transform Your Life. Uh, again, if you want a copy of it or are interested in order it, just contact me. It's going to be available in December 2009. Uh, so, again, we're always thankful when guests... Uh, and and we, we're going to have a guest on the show here in just a minute. We're always thankful when guests come on this show. Uh, and we have someone special on this show from the uh, Neighborhood Christian Legal Clinic. So we'll be back here with this uh, person in just a minute. Yes, at Faith in the Law, um, after 200 years, our eagle sight's going a little bit. So the eagle wears Prada on the this show. No disrespect to our country symbol, but they wanted me to take my glasses off because my shades in my eyes a little bit. And plus, people want to see some baby blue eyes, too. So. Yes, there you go. Show them eyes. <laughs> but uh, we're glad and very privileged.